I really don't have that much to share this past month, so uh, if you have any suggestions for me, any, any favorites, books to read, any music to listen to, let me know, because I can really use your help. The last month, I basically spent the entire time doing ceramics. In any case, I have a few things here that I want to talk about. I'm going to start with a book that I just read for the first time. It's a very short book. I think you can read it in like 30 minutes or so, but it's called This is Water by David Foster Wallace. It's a speech that he gave at a graduation. Some thoughts delivered on a significant occasion about living a compassionate life. I've been trying to figure out how to feel more fulfilled um, on my day-to-day -day basis. Um, all, all the stuff that I do day-to-day, -day, and I know that I'm really lucky that I'm self-employed and that I can make my own schedule, but um, I find that because I don't have a strict schedule, I can kind of just do whatever I want and then um, kind of cram, you know, in a way. And I don't feel very fulfilled like I did when I had a team to work with or people holding me accountable and stuff. And I still have that, but they're not physically here and I don't physically see them. I just have meetings and stuff and I just don't feel all that fulfilled right now, so I'm working on that right now. So after I read this book, I just read it on the Lunar New Year, so just a week ago. I've been thinking about it every day since. It talks about um, what you do day in and day out, and there's this one part, because I experience this a lot, especially living in LA when you're stuck in traffic. I flip out all the time in my car, in the safety of my own car, um, and I'll say things that I would never say to someone to their face, not even on the phone, not even via text, I wouldn't say it to someone, you know? But I'll like scream that at someone because I'm so stressed out about uh, crashing and stuff. But anyway, that book made me kind of pump the brakes a little bit and kind of reconsider that um, you can't really take these things personally because if someone cuts you off it could be because, I mean it's unlikely, but it could be because they're um, rushing to the emergency room because their son is throwing up or whatever, you know? Or um, if there's a woman who's like screaming at her kid at the grocery store, it could be because she spent the last three days up helping her husband or whatever, you know? It's just, there's so many things that go on in other people's lives that we don't know about. Anyway, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a recording on YouTube that is available, which I'll link in the description box if you want to see it. I think it's around 30 minutes or so. Definitely worth listening to. You can't really watch it, but you can read it, read along with it. I think it's so good and it kind of helps you rethink so this is definitely something that I'm gonna revisit at least once a month or at least once a year. Every year at the beginning of every year um, I read the same four or five self-help books so right now I'm looking at my bed and they're just like stacked right there and I'm considering telling you guys about it but I, I'm also really embarrassed that I read the same books every single year. I've been watching a lot of like older, not older, but, like 90s movies. So this movie called To Die For, it's 95. It's with Nicole Kidman and most importantly, it's with Joaquin Phoenix, who's my favorite. Nicole Kidman is a news anchor and she's like highly manipulative and super sexy. So um, a very entertaining movie to watch. I'll leave the trailer down below if you guys are interested in watching it. It's done very well. It's like very stylish. Uh, yeah, very interesting, very... It's inspiring to me because I want to get back into shooting creatively and that's very doable. Like the shots that they use, it's very doable and the editing and everything is very doable. My top artist for 2019, number one was Kendrick, number two I think was Shabazz Palaces. So Ishmael from Shabazz is in this group called Diggable Planets and they're coming to LA mid-February so I'm gonna go see them. I've been so excited about it that I've been watching interviews and live performances. I had this dream, and I've had dreams in similar situations before, which is so strange, but I had this dream where I'm in Seattle with Khan and I'm walking down like this stairwell, you know, and it's dark, and I'm walking down right, and I see this person at the very end, it's not scary or anything like that, but um, this person turns and he has like this bright white smile and it's the guy from Shabazz Palaces. He's also in Digwell Planets. And then I was just like, oh my gosh, of course you would see him, because I hear about people seeing him all the time in Seattle. And I feel like if I ever ran into him, I would I would be so happy, you know? Anyway, so he was there with Erica Badu, and they were working on a song in the stairwell for some reason, because oddly enough, it has amazing acoustics. And then my friend Khan was like, hey, buddy. And they just started talking, and I'm like, oh my god. Like, Khan's the friendliest person I know, and he can make friends with just anyone. I think the only reason why I had that dream is because I went to bed watching performances of um, Erica Badu and Shabazz Palaces. Well, it's a lot of Sade and a lot of Marvin Gaye and um, I guess the last artist 
on my top five artists of 2019 was um, Queens of the Stone Age, which I also really like to listen to when I'm driving and when I'm running. If you guys want me to make a playlist of my favorite Kendrick songs, let me know because he's seriously someone I would listen to every single day. I probably do already listen to him every single day. So I usually wear penny loafers, you know, with the little slot and everything. I'll show you one. Um, these are Weijins, and I put pennies in there because they're called penny loafers. Um, but I just recently got this one with the tassels right here. And I've been wearing these a ton. I need to get them resold on the bottom because it kind of slips around a lot. I really like these. They're super comfy. Um, they're like the school uniform, Catholic school uniform shoe, you know? I've got an amazing insole and I really like wearing them with jeans because they make every outfit just look a little bit more put together. And it's kind of punk rock in a way because it doesn't really go, you know? Anyway, um, I went to Doc's or Doc Martin the other day and I tried on this. This is called the Adrian, and it's essentially the same exact shoe, so I'll hold one up next to the other. Isn't that crazy? It's the same size, but this is just, I don't know, it's more like badass in a way. So I really like this, but this is a bit more casual than um, the Weijins. I finally got a Mason Pearson brush, and it's made all the difference. I obviously used it on my hair. The last like month or so, I've been using this religiously. Like, <laughs> I look forward to brushing my hair out a hundred times every morning. Like right when I wake up, I'm like, yes. I'm just like brushing it all the way through from root to, from root to tip. It's great because I have super oily hair and it helps me extend my style for like four or five days. So I don't have to wash my hair for four or five days. It just kind of redistributes everything. And usually whenever I brush my hair, my hair is like super bushy. Um, but this doesn't make it bushy, which is odd. I think everyone knows that Mason Pearson has a cult following, but I just never looked into it. I just thought, you know, the price is so not right. But after getting it and using it for a month, I totally understand why people love it. So before I got this, I got this brush called the Sheila Stutz. I think it's meant for extensions. So I think it's called the application brush or maybe the... I'll leave a link to it in the description box, but I got this because um, into the gloss recommended it and Emily Weiss uses it um, a bunch of hairstylists uses it so I've been using this for about four years now and it works great so if you already have this I wouldn't say go out run and get the Mason Pearson but my hairstylist gave me this brush which is a Renee Fritter I don't know um, she gave me this war brush right it's a round war brush and I saw how it distributes the oil in my hair so for a while there I was using both of this, this and this together and then I saw this on Anthropology, and I was just like oh, okay yeah I want to get this and um, it just feels very like ASMR-y in a way because the little, um, I guess this is like the plastic or nylon bristles, they just feel really good against your scalp so it gives you a little bit of a scalp massage you know and then the boar bristles distribute everything, it gets rid of all the dust and everything, and then it comes with this brush right here where, where you can clean it off. I know it's pricey and hard to justify, but I wanted to buy a Dyson hair dryer for a while, even though I don't blow dry my hair. And then I thought, you know what, I think a brush would be healthier for my hair, so yeah. It truly is the Rolls Royce of hair brushes. Ooh, I've been using this Fenty matchstick in the color Confetti. It's kind of like a sparkly, super fun, um, highlight shade. I really like it. I just kind of like layer it on and then smudge it out and just put it everywhere. So like on my cheeks, on my eyelids. It's just super fun. There's little shimmers in it and there's like a, let's see what are the reflect colors. There's blue, purple, a little bit of white. So just fun confetti colors, you know? I really like this. It's super fun getting back into like peacocking, you know what I mean? Melon gets has this product called the Meadow Foam Oil Balm and I've been using it after ceramics and it's been phenomenal. So you can actually use this on your hair, all over your body, on your lips as a lip balm, um, on your face as a moisturizer. It's a multi-use balm and it smells like essential oils. It just smells phenomenal. It's unlike anything I've ever used before. So if you do ceramics or if you do anything that dries out your hands, I highly recommend this. Um, go into a Melanie Gets shop and just try it out. I think you'd like it. I guess the last thing that I want to talk about is something that I tried for the first time at Cecilia's house just a couple weeks ago and I've been thinking about it since so I finally went to the market and got some and I got a ton of them and gave it out to all my friends. It's called the um, Lao Ganma Spicy Chili Crisp. It's not that spicy. The name is a little bit misleading because it's not like a hot sauce. It's just a 
topping. So good on eggs, on soups, or in soups, um, over avocado toast, just on anything that you eat. Just put a little bit of this on top. It's a little bit of kick, but it's not crazy spicy. It's super delicious. It'll make everything taste better. Yeah, so those are all my favorites for the month of January. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any recommendations for me, leave a comment down below. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.